Hi everybody, Phyllis Moore here, Philosophically Speaking. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. I do invite you to click like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned. For those of you who have been paying attention for any amount of time, because um, it's been kind of subtle and nuances, and I've, I've referenced a little bit that my parents are in failing health, and it's on the decline. I think I did one post where I was talking about, uh, you know, that, that, you know, there's, there's no side door, shortcut, turn around and go in another direction, death is imminent. Uh, my husband said the other day, Father Time is undefeated. I guess that's a sports reference, but basically, you know, hey, none of us gets out of here alive, right? We all have our last day, our um, end, end um, of life as we know it. And I've alluded to that in terms of failing health and quality of life and different things. And as a Christian, we talk about that. We are aware of that. We read scripture about that. And I know in the weeks and months ahead, I will be reading even more personally about what those promises are and what God is has said, you know, throughout the Bible, what lies ahead for us if we believe that he has prepared a place for us, that he has a home for us in heaven, all of those things that, that Jesus personified and came to earth to teach us and share with us and tell us so that we would one day go and live there with him. That's the eternal plan. As you might have heard before, maybe you've seen it in, in an obituary, that we leave our, our earthly body and we go to our heavenly home. Because really, who we are and how we are now, how we look, is just a body that covers our soul. And our soul of who we are, who we strive to be, that's what will go and live in heaven. So when we hear about people that have lessened quality of life, such as you know mental, physical, all kinds of debilitating things that gradually change, and no longer sustain us here. Um, we can leave that behind. And um, my father's life on earth ended five, six days ago now. And so no, I haven't gotten on here and talked about that. I, I kind of had stuck with, you know, some, some posts that were a little more lighthearted and took the time to be with my mom and console her. And I, I'm going to brag, I'm going to brag that because maybe in part we expected it. I mean, the last three to five years have been, I believe, God allowing us to grieve and prepare for the loss, more so than if it was abrupt or sudden. So I can't address how that is for people who lose a loved one. Um, and nor am I an expert on this. You know, all we know is what our experience shows us, teaches us, and from that what we what we learn. And I, I know I'll learn a lot. Um, I've, I've watched my dad, I guess as I reflect on it, and I, I won't go into a lot of detail because that's not, you know, that's not necessary here, but I know there was there were moments when we would go to their house for like a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving dinner and my dad would just like shuffle his feet. He might be wearing slippers and you'd hear slip, 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 you know, across the floor, which ordinarily you would say to someone, pick up your feet, pick up your feet. But over time it became more pronounced and he went from, you know, maybe needing extra, extra, he was slow or slower and then would need, you know, a, maybe a walker and he's used a cane and then he used a, um, one of those, whatever, what do they call it when you go into the store and you use those motorized um, chairs and things. And then of course he would rely on a wheelchair when he would go somewhere for any length of time. And it just, it was very gradual very gradual. I don't think anything could have prepared us, and, and if you've had this experience, perhaps you can relate. Nothing prepares us for what the aging process will be like because there is not a linear line that we all age the same. My dad was very active, very active. I, if, if ever I walked with him, I couldn't keep up. But I also know that one of the reasons I walk as much as I do now is because he was no longer able to. 
So I think I just thought, you know, I'll take good care of my body, which is a temple for God. And, you know, he created me. I certainly want to take good care of myself and my health. And my dad was not on medication. He really was not one to use medication, to rely on medication. And he was fortunate that he didn't need that. So he really took excellent care of his, himself until he couldn't. And he spent the last three years bedridden. And I, I just can't imagine, my heart goes out to him for having to rely on everyone to feed him, to clothe him, to bathe him, to take care of everything because he couldn't just get up and walk across the room. And that's, that's tough. It's difficult when others have to lift you and move you because you can't get out of bed on your own. But when it goes to the point where you can't even get out of bed at all, even with help, because you know that, there's, that's just not there. And so, like I say, we have, have known, but sometimes there's only so much preparation you can have and even so there still is that finality that the person is no longer there and i you know i am blessed beyond measure that we had him for 89 years celebrated his 89th birthday a few months ago um, but it's it still is difficult and i'm going to be processing it for a while i spent the first few days in overdrive you know, taking care of business. I called my children to make sure that they knew and heard it from me. I immediately got in the car and went down to be with my mom and spend the night and, and kind of help her through and, and give my sister a break because she's down there. And then, of course, we had the funeral and there was a graveside and it was graveside service and it was three or four hours apart, but we were trying to honor his wishes. He had brilliantly made his arrangements six years before, you know, when, when none of this was, was on the horizon. So he didn't know it was going to be like it was. And we were able to pay tribute to him despite, you know, social distancing and masks and everything else. We were able to do, I think, a very nice representative of our family and him, um, tribute to him. And what helps me what helps me profoundly, and it's not a surprise, but it is a surprise because up until that point, I had a lot of things going on that were just kind of attacking from different directions. And the day before, didn't know it was the day before my father's passing, but the day before, my prayer had been, Lord, I just can't go on. I just can't go on. I, I can't do this. It's hard. I, I just, I feel like I'm walking through quicksand, mud, whatever you want to say. I just am not, I'm in a fog and it was hard. I didn't feel like I had the strength. I didn't feel like I had anything to do or to offer or to cope with. And then the next day I get the call and suddenly it's like, you know, God showed up. I had prayed for that. And when I was in that position, he was there. And, or, and I'm sure he was there all along, but I felt it. I knew it. And I had the prayers of many who cared about my family enforcing that and kind of carrying me through. But I was able to get through those first four or five days and the funeral and speak. I never thought I would be able to speak at my father's funeral, but I did. And I, I hope I made him proud. But after that when all was said and done and i you know dropped my mom off and we came home oh gosh the days since have been well grieving you know i mean you feel what you feel i mean to the point where this morning i was listening to music i try to listen to music you know you, you think i'll put on stuff that always makes me happy because when you have music that you like, it's one of those healing things, and you think, you know what, if ever something's going on, these are the songs I'll listen to because I know it's guaranteed. Well, guess what? Not so fast there, because you might be listening to something and going, oh my gosh, now it's gonna make me sad, because you, you hear it a different, different way. And I'll have different things that I liked um, over time. Um, like back, in, back when I was in college, Linda Ronstadt, the Eagles were two, you know, just two of the many that, that I really liked. So what would come on today as I'm trying to get ready? But Linda Ronstadt's I Will Always Love You, which of course Whitney Houston did and 
Dolly Parton wrote and performed. But when I heard it today, I've always liked it, and I made it through. It was great. And then the next song was the Eagles' Desperado. Always liked that song as well. Well, guess what? I never heard that song with my dad. That has nothing to do with my father. It's not something I would have connected or a memory, but it always had kind of a poignant thing because it was always like this wild, rebellious, you know, couldn't commit and, and you know, just, you know, maybe had his own pain and, and, and things that he'd gone through. But still, doesn't necessarily have to be about my dad, but oh, I got halfway through and I had to change it. I thought, this is making me very, the feels were, were there, definitely. And it's okay. I have no problem feeling the feelings I need to. You can't go around them. You can't avoid them. It's important for your mental health to feel the grief and the loss and realize, okay, I will miss him because he left an indelible footprint on my heart and a huge impression that will never be replaced. There's nobody like him. And I will just say, my dad was not famous. My dad was not well known. It's not like you'd hear his name and go, oh my gosh, that's your dad? Oh, we've heard of him, you know, around the world. He created this, he, you know, founded this, he was president, CEO. No. In many ways, you might say, well, he was just a, a guy. He was just an ordinary man. But I am telling you, for anyone that has ever known him and my family, he was not an ordinary man because you just look at his character and he was consistent. One of the things that was shared at the funeral in different places is he was kind, he was generous, he was soft-spoken, he was helpful, he was a servant. He did a lot of things anonymously. He made impressions on a lot of people and he was the real deal. He was a godly man who and, and this is, you, believe it or not, but I shared this at the funeral, but I never heard him raise his voice to my mother. I never really heard him yell. You knew if he was disappointed and he was strict and he let us know what he expected and, and one of those was respect. He, expect, he expected us to respect our mother and talk to her with respect. And yeah, we had rules and we, you know, we were, you know, we better, <laughs> we better abide by them or there would be consequences. You know, we heard things like a man's word is his bond and um, there are no free lunches and the world does not owe you a living and you know, a handshake deal means something. And we learned a lot, we learned a lot about faith. And you know, I mean, I, could, I told all kinds of funny anecdotes and, and things, um, what he liked, you know, on TV and he liked to read his paper and watch TV and, and you know, he served in the military for 20 years. But when he came home and changed that uniform, he was dad. We knew nothing about what he did. And likewise, we knew nothing about what he went through. I mean, he might've really, although he never served in war, he did have remote assignments that probably changed him and we probably have no idea what he ha held in because of what he experienced. He wasn't one to bandy about things like I love you and that was his generation I think and those he held the closest he probably had the hardest time expressing those kinds of feelings. They just were not words in his vocabulary. And I, I mean, to the point where it, I would say if the pastor was reading something and said, okay, okay, congregation, repeat after me, I love you, I don't think he would. And it's not because he didn't feel it, but I just don't think he could say it. And yet, I've come to see, there's one passage of scripture which we've all heard many, many, many times. 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, love does not boast, keeps no record of wrongs, love endures all things, hopes all things. That was all him. That was all him. I could, I could just read that passage to you and, and say, that's my dad, that's Bill Moore. And you, you would go, wow, but it's true. And those who knew him have had an outpouring on social media and to me and my family and have reiterated that. And everyone, virtually everyone in our youth group, particularly those who didn't have a father in the home or didn't have parents who were supporting them and attending church with them and giving them a spiritual base, yeah, he became like a spiritual, a surrogate dad to them. And there were so many that have reached out to us and, and expressed 
how kind my dad was to them and how good he was to them. And I'm telling you, you may think, well, we don't know who he was, but there are plenty of people who do. And there are plenty of people whose lives are better today because of his example, because of his generosity of spirit, because of his soft, still voice that came up alongside of them and you knew that he was there for you. And we did. He was there for everything that we needed him for. Mealtime, providing for our needs, making sure we felt safe at home, making sure we knew we were part of a family and part of something special. We took it for granted at times that everyone had a family like that. Everyone didn't have a family like that. So we were even more richly blessed. He was there to teach us to ride a bike, drive a car. He made sure we had an education. And I'm telling you, when I moved home, to be closer to my family like 20 years ago, so they would have been in their 60s. He and my mom drove 900 miles, 875 miles to New York, upstate New York, to, to get a U-Haul and drive me and my daughter home to North Carolina. I'm telling you, he made sure I had a house. He made sure I had a car when I was struggling and, you know, was a single mom. And even to the point, this will tell you about his character, my daughter, who was probably like 13, 14 at the time, said she was with them one day and they were in a parking lot of a store. And I guess there was someone there, she was a single mom and had, you know, children. And he gave her money. And, she, you know, par partly because he knew that his daughter had been in that situation, me. and. He, he would have wanted someone to help me. And that's just the kindness, that's just one example. There are countless things which we probably will never know because he never sought credit. He modestly did things quietly and anonymously for people. I am telling you, there are times when I have wanted to be famous, but I look at my dad today and I think, you know what, do I wanna be famous or do I wanna be remembered as a kind, compassionate, generous soul who did right things for as many people as I possibly could. Yeah, that's the role model I'm following. I have a greater understanding of God today because I saw it in my dad. I know we can't all have that, but certainly I'm glad that I did. So I just wanted to share that with you just so you kind of know the real truth of, of what's going on. You know, it's not all funny and it's not all flip and I don't have it all together all the time, but I knew somebody who did and I have that example to follow. So today I have a brighter light shining on my path because there there is no doubt in my mind. My faith has taught me all these years and now I get it. I understand because when I heard my father had passed away on August 12th, I immediately, immediately, pictured him in heaven walking again and smiling and being so happy to be in the presence of the Lord. Can't, you can have nothing better than to know that that is your place and that is your home and you are being taken care of, that he can talk and he can help others and God is taking really good care of him. And so it's even more important that I do everything I can to join him one day because I'm telling you a good man is hard to find and I was blessed to have one right in my house right in my house all along I hope that you have that or can find that or can be that for yourself and for others so I'm sure I'll talk more about different aspects of this because now I have a mission I have a mission and a purpose to read all I can about heaven and the promises of eternity because now I get it. I get it and that's the lesson that you know we all need to go because we got to make that decision. That is the most important decision we'll probably ever make. So take care of yourself. God bless and I just, I just hope that you will click like, share, and subscribe and keep coming back. Thanks for joining me. Feel free to leave a comment also. I'd love to hear from you. Take care.